And my colleague, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, has said, quote, Christian nationalism is actually a good thing. Yeah, I also call myself a Christian nationalist. And that's not a bad word. That's actually a good thing, right? And there's nothing wrong with leading with your, in, with your faith, because we should lead with our faith. My colleague, Representative Lowen Boebert, said, quote, The church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk that's not in the Constitution. It was in a stinking letter, and it means nothing like what they say it does. The Bible itself in 2 Corinthians actually warns us against this. Paul warned against this. He warned us against people who would preach of a Christ that differs from the true Christ that we learn about in the Bible. That's exactly what Christian nationalism is doing. I condemn religious extremism everywhere, globally and domestically. We have to recognize the threat it po poses to our most sacred freedoms and root it out everywhere. And I think it's incumbent, especially upon us uh, as Christians, and me, and me as a Christian, to be at the forefront of the fight to ensure that white nationalism and Christian nationalism doesn't see the light of day. Religious prosecution and uh, violent extre extremism globally are very serious threats to U.S. security and human rights abroad. Today, I, on my line, I want to focus in and hone in on religious extremism happening here in the United States domestically because I believe it's also a very important part of this conversation. Christian nationalism is a form of religious extremism making its way into our policies and undermining our democracy. These extremist actors are co-opting the language of Christianity and religious, religious freedom to push an undemocratic agenda that seeks the very opposite of what they claim to do. And I, I want to start off by saying I'm a man of faith. I was raised Southern Baptist. I love potlucks. I was in Awana. I got the Sparky Award. Uh, I was in youth band for about 10 years. This is a huge part of my life and part of the reason why I'm so passionate about it. Um, as a man of faith, I know that Christianity is not Christian nationalism. I oppose my faith being used to whitewash a racist, violent, and dangerous ideology. Ms. Tyler, I have a few questions for you, but let's start with this. How does religion differ from religious extremism, and why is religious extremism, um, specifically Christian nationalism, threaten the safety and lives of people in our communities? Well, I, I think that religious nationalism is this tendency to merge our religious and national identities, and it can occur along a spectrum, but can also be co-opted by those in power to enforce a certain religious viewpoint on everyone else. And that's why it's such an urgent threat to religious freedom. Uh, but it is also, as you point out, an urgent threat to democracy. And it's because it is taking this increasingly violent aspect. And we saw that um, on January 6th and the way that Christian nationalism was used as a permission structure and as a uniting um, ideology for people who were who were here at the Capitol that day in search of a political cause that was then infused with religious fervor. And what would you say the relationship is between white supremacy and Christian nationalism? Christian nationalism often overlaps with and provides cover for white supremacy and racial subjugation. Um, that's because the Christian and Christian nationalism is not so much about theology as it is about an ethno-national identity. Yeah, and Christian nationalists have played vital roles in very violent attacks. Even recently, the, the killing of 11 people attending services at the Tree of Life synagogue, synagogue in Pittsburgh. The, the killing and murder of, of nine people attending a Bible study at Emmanuel um, African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina, the Emmanuel Nine. The killing of 33 people um, shopping at Walmart and Tops in El Paso and Buffalo. Ms. Tyler, how does Christian nationalism pose a threat to our democratic institutions? Well, I think all of those examples are what happens when this ideology of Christian nationalism is used by white supremacists to try to justify their violence. It uses the symbols and the language of Christianity to try to justify what is indefensible. And it turns, again, their hatred into a religious cause, into something that they believe is ordained by God. Most Christian nationalists claim to support religious freedom while at the same time working to, to uh, have the exact opposite of that happen. Have you noticed a coordinated attempt in America to co-opt the right of religious freedom to try and justify stripping rights away from people? 
Well, I do think that language really matters here in definitions. And too often, we hear the language of religious freedom being used for what is really religious privilege or Christian nationalism. True religious freedom requires equality for all people regardless of religious belief. And that's why it's so important, as our Constitution promises, that the government will stay neutral when it comes to religion to allow all religions to flourish.